As a news station, KHQ8 usually does not report suicides on the air. The reason we don't want it to be seen as an answer to somebody's problem or even provoke copycats. Well, with at least four teenage suicides in the tri-states in the last year, we thought maybe it's time to start a conversation. KHQ's Chad Douglas kicks off a five-part series this morning called Shattering the Silence. Well, it seems nobody likes to talk about suicide, and really that's part of the problem. Nobody talks about it until it's too late. Half the battle in tackling a problem is first realizing there is one. He was a great kid. She was really funny. He was the class clown. She loved music. She loved her friends. He always wanted to help others. Great memories of friends and loved ones. Unfortunately, that's all that's left of Dylan Muldoon and Hannah Wathen memories. May 19th, 2015, two days before high school graduation, this Hannibal High senior took her own life. Six months later, Quincy Senior High student Dylan Muldoon met the same fate. Two different teenagers in different cities with different circumstances, but the same outcome, suicide. This is not the rest of your life. You know, this is not a good experience right now. You will get past this. Dr. Jessica Patel is a certified clinical psychologist with Quincy Medical Group. She says the number one weapon in preventing suicide, talking about it. Anytime anyone makes a comment regarding possible what we call suicidal ideation or suicidal thoughts, it needs to be taken seriously. Even if it's said in a joking manner, Human brains don't fully mature until about 25 years old, so for kids, joking about suicide could be a call for help or a way for them to test the water, so to speak. If someone says something like this to you, take it seriously and ask more questions. I would ask them what the thoughts are, you know, what's going on, how they're feeling. Um, honestly, as a professional, the next question that we ask is, do they have a plan? If they do, you should call 911 or take them straight to the emergency room. If there is no definite plan, that person still needs to see a doctor. You can start with your general practitioner. Part of the issue is also the stigma that's associated with mental health. Mental health is not something bad. If I had diabetes, I would be getting help. I would go to the hospital, I would go to a clinician and get help. The same is for mental health, you know, but there's this stigma behind it that you're that you're crazy. Dr. Patel says at least one in three people have some sort of mental illness. Now there's nothing to be ashamed of in seeking help. She also adds that if you've had treatment for mental illness, you can be a big asset to helping others if you share your story. And start young, she says instilling coping mechanisms in kids as young as preschool will help them as they grow and develop into teenagers and adults. Dr. Jessica Patel says she's done suicide risk assessments on kids as young as six. She also says when seeking professional help, you need to make sure the therapist is trained in cognitive behavioral therapy or dialectical behavioral therapy. She says those two therapies have the best long-term outcomes. If you're not sure if your mental health professional is trained in those therapies, simply ask. And we've also got another final tip from Dr. Patel this morning. She says one of the first predictors of suicidal behavior is the feeling of hopelessness. If they're not talking about the future, that should be concerning. And she adds many times people might not be willing to come to you, so you have to ask about them. Now, if you see something different in a friend or a family member, start the conversation yourself.